Good morning all. Today I thought I'd continue building the Sunfounder Crawling Quadruped Robot Kit for Arduino. So here's my box of bits. Now I'm going to lay them out on the desk so that uh, I can see where I am with this kit. So here are some of the uh, made up parts. Now in the first video I was having trouble with uh, these screws, screwing them into the acrylic which is quite a hard plastic. Uh, the heads were breaking off the screws. Uh, you can see here that uh, two of the screws, the heads have broken off and that's because I wasn't using a lubricant. So for all the remaining uh, screws in all these parts I used washing up liquid as a lubricant but that's had a bit of a side effect and uh, that is that the water in the washing up liquid has caused the screws to start rusting. I didn't actually wipe all the uh, surplus washing up liquid away so I'm gonna have to just spend a bit of time cleaning these uh, rusty bolts up now. Right, these are all cleaned up now, so they're looking uh, pretty good, and now I can continue with the project. Now the next thing is servos. Uh, the servos either have a leg attached to them, like these four, or they have uh, one of these plastic brackets attached to them, and what they do is make up pairs of servos, which are effectively the knee joint, um, so that the leg attaches on one and the other one attaches via uh, these things to the main body. So I've done two of the pairs. Um, these two are paired. You just put a bolt through to hold the two pieces of plastic together. So I just do need to do the other two and then those are all done. I'll do those now. So these are quite tricky to do. You've got to drop a nut down into uh, this hole here with a pair of tweezers and then feed a bolt through from the outside and uh, do that up. I suppose it's not too bad. Now these have to be made up in mirrored pairs. So uh, one of the servos, this piece moves to the right and the other servo, it goes to the left. But the manual tells you how to do all the uh, pairing uh, quite well. So that's actually all the plastic parts with their servo arms attached and all the servos with their plastic brackets attached. So now I'm gonna move on to uh, Arduino related stuff and actually wind right back to the beginning of the manual. So right back here at the beginning, uh, under getting started, it says in this kit, Sunfounder Nano board is used. And this is quite an interesting uh, Nano. This is actually a Sunfounder branded Nano. Let's flip it over. Now I've never seen a Nano before that uses the Prolific Labs uh, PL2303 USB to serial driver chip. And uh, when I've used these chips in the past, I've always had problems with them. But that may be because they were either clone or fake chips. This one uh, actually seems fine. I've plugged it in. The driver has come up on my PC. Uh, the Blink program is in there running on that rather nice white LED. Let's take a look at the driver manager. Uh, of course, I mean the device manager. So here it is uh, under ports, COM and LPT. We have the prolific USB to serial COM port, which on here has uh, picked up COM 8. So that all looks fine. Um, so I'm going to plow on. Now in the manual, it says um, go to the CD-ROM and load a program called or a sketch called Servo. But the little note that came with it said they don't supply our CD-ROM anymore. I need to go to the learn section of the SunFounder website. And uh, here in the robot uh, crawling quadruped robot kit, I've got a downloadable uh, CD which comes down as a zip folder. So I'm just going to download that now. And uh, that's coming in as a 111 megabyte uh, zip folder. So that's not going to take too long. So from the CD, uh, I've installed the servo sketch onto the Nano. Now I thought I could get away with just plugging in the servo, I've got to make sure this is right around, ground VCC signal into uh, servo port number one. And I thought it might do something, but it doesn't seem to be. So now I think I'm going to connect up the uh, battery box and uh, put some batteries in and do it how it says you should do it. And uh, that's now working with the batteries connected to the uh, terminal, which you have to clamp down very hard, so hard it rotates. Um, and it is sweeping. There's a very peculiar glitch at one end there. 
So that's a bit strange. But anyway, that's working. So uh, the Nano is obviously working. The servo output thing is working. The Flexi Timer library, which I had to install, is also working. So let's plow on. Now the next part requires that you build the remote control. Uh, this is the remote control here um, with batteries and bits of ribbon so you can pull the batteries out. Now it says turn the power on and I did that and the Arduino lighted up fine and then it says now plug in USB leaving this power on and that's when I got slightly nervous um, but I guess the circuitry on here is uh, okay that you can have two power sources running into the Nano. But now another issue has cropped up. I've just noticed that the PL2303 chip on these two Nanos, both of these are Sun Founder Nanos uh, supplied with the kit. One is for the remote control and one is for the robot itself. But they're different versions. This one is a PL2303TA and this one is a 2303HX. Now the TA works fine with my current driver but the HX is showing um, a triangle with an exclamation mark in it. So this is with the HX connected and I'm getting this um, yellow triangle with the exclamation mark and if I get properties on that, that's just off the screen, but um, it says this device cannot start code 10 and all that stuff and that's the stuff that um, there was some information on on Prolific's website. So here's a warning notice on Prolific's website. Um, now it's about counterfeit or fake PL2303HX. Now I'm not saying that Sunfounder would give me a fake PL2303, um, but there is a thing down here which says PL2303HX Rev A or PL2303HXA also has been discontinued end of line since October 20. 12 and does not support Windows 8 onwards. Prolific advises users to purchase cables and adapters with a PL2303HXD, which is the Rev D, or a PL2303TA. Well, one of my nanos has the TA, the other one has the HX. So, have I got a problem here? So, just for the moment, um, in order to test the uh, remote control, I think actually all it tests is the joystick. I'm not going to use this uh, one with the HX variant. Um, there's the HX chip. You can just see that it says HX. I'm going to use uh, this one instead, which is the TA variant. Uh, this was the one I used in the um, on the robot board. So I'm going to use this for both just for the moment. Obviously, that's not going to work when I come to actually using the robot, but let's just test the remote for now. Well now actually I do have a problem because what it wants me to do here is to put the transmit program into the remote controller and then put the receive program into the servo control board that sits in the robot itself and actually see that we're getting data from the joystick over the, um, the uh, serial, the actual wireless data link. So there is a problem here because I need to get both nanos working. So the only way I can think to get around this problem is to bypass this HX version of the chip. And so the transmit program, I'm going to program into this Nano using an ISP programmer. This is a USB tiny ISP programmer. So that's how I'm gonna get transmit in and then receive I'll put in the other one just through USB because that will work. So let's do that. So that was all a bit of a plava, but um, that does seem to be working. The uh, board that's acting as the receiver, um, the transmit lights on, which means that it's transmitting down the USB to the serial monitor. And I am getting uh, a message. Of course, it says no radio available because the, the transmitter is switched off. So let's put that down. Here's the transmitter. So let's power it up. Now we get radio and we're getting two values there for X and Y. And if I move the joystick, I can change X between 0 and 1023 and Y similarly 1023 and 0 and then all other values in between. So that seems to be working. It's transmitting uh, from this transmitter. The transmit code is in that Arduino. I had to put it in via the ISP header, but uh, we can now move on. 
Now the next thing is that you have to connect all 12 servos to the servo board and you load in a sketch uh, called crawler and uh, this one here crawler and then you have to uh, set it to install mode and I think all this does is puts the servos in their center position now they were all approximately in their center position but I've moved the four leg ones off so we'll see what happens when I press that and they moved to the center position and now when I switch it on they just jitter a bit but they are now all in their center positions uh, ready for constructing the robot well now I've discovered that I've assembled these all back to front it seems that this servo should be facing outwards um, with this one it's quite confusing but I think uh, this is all wrong so I have to undo these bolts and just rearrange the way these plastic pieces interlock so let's do that now now I'm a bit confused now because it this section here didn't seem to put all the servos in their center positions in fact it seemed to just jam them all up at their end stops in fact every time I switch the thing on and off they seem to tweak a bit further round now here it doesn't say it just says connect all the 12 servos to the servo control board but it doesn't say in any particular order and it says now all the servos will rotate and stay in a certain position well what position um, it doesn't appear to be centered on them now if you randomly mix up the 12 servos you, you don't know which one's which so it can't be setting them to specific positions it must be I don't know what's going on well now I've painstakingly checked each servo uh, and yes it does seem to be putting them all to their center positions so it probably would be useful if the manual at this point said rather than uh, they stay in a certain position that they go to their center positions okay moving on now when fitting these uh, servos to the main center base plate um, you're supposed to get them all sort of square on but of course there aren't that many splines so you have two positions either there or there there isn't one bang on so I'm just going with the nearest one and hopefully the calibration process will bring all these uh, servos into line later on hmm lucky I didn't chuck all the servo screws away because uh, now we need these servo screws to attach the uh, arms well that's the robot assembled with all its servos and legs and arms and whatever else um, now it seems I was supposed to do this with all the servos connected to the servo control board and that program running which keeps them all in their center position but uh, that would be massively impractical so what I did was I just sort of attached them um, trying not to deviate them off their center position too much they did move once you get the screw tight but of course that doesn't really matter it's just finding the the spline position that keeps them approximately centered so I think they're all roughly centered still so on to the next step ah oh, well it seems the next step is just to sort of move the servos so that the uh, legs are all in sort of positions where this thing can is a bit more compact and it can stand so kind of like that so it's a bit more uh, spider like okay Right, well, bending these battery connections back on themselves so that the pins fitted in a bit deeper wasn't a brilliant idea because now this one's stuck in there and I can't get it out. Oh dear. Oh, and now it seems that the uh, wire pin has pulled out of the end of the black plastic bit. I think I'm just going to cut these off and solder it in the ends. Well, I think it's time for a break now because... Um, threading these bits of ribbon trying to attach the battery box with all these arms sticking out was uh, so <laughs> difficult that I need a break back soon